Clay Pearson, you're back on the island getting ready to depart again, but you've had a fantastic year, you and your Rowan team. Um, outstanding performances in, in two major events uh, for your Rowan club. Let's first go through the first championship, the one that uh, got so much worldwide publicity. Um, that feeling when you guys first got into the, to the boat mm -hmm. and then what was going through you guys prior to the start and then once you started, what, what was that feeling like? Uh, pretty stressful. I want to say that's probably the most stressful race I've ever experienced. Uh, going in, once we got into the boat, I was sort of all heads in. We knew there was going to be a lot of distractions around us. We knew there were going to be helicopters, people screaming on the shorelines. And so it was just about staying as focused as we possibly could. And then once we got onto the stake boats, sort of sitting there ready for the start, it was just trying to keep our nerves down as much as possible, which was quite a challenging task. Uh, and then once the race started, it was just all heads in, one mission, one go. And that actually got a bit easier to sort of keep the distractions away um, probably the most painful race I've also ever experienced it was pretty comforting to hear our stroke seat who was Karen Davies who is a three-time Olympic gold, uh, medalist for the United States say that that was the hardest race she'd ever experienced to make us all feel a little bit better about it um, but crossing that finish line was probably one of the greatest sort of joys and reliefs um, and a pretty fantastic feeling now you guys built a big lead mm -hmm. uh, midway into the race was there any sense of this is going to be it during that period or did you all wait until the end? Uh, I think we knew it's one of those races that because it's so long and side by side like that, it's sort of a make or break it type of race. And if you can break the other crew, you've got them. And so once we had the lead that we knew we had, we knew that there was there was not really a lot that they were going to be able to do to come back into us. It was just maintaining it and hanging on for dear life. <laughs> uh, we front loaded the race pretty heavily, which is why it was one of the more painful races I've ever experienced. And that was, that was what you have to do in that kind of situation because you need to get a lead. You need to get out ahead in order to keep going. Uh, and so we, we sort of knew you can't ever be too confident, but we know that once you break them, you've broken them and it's sort of yours for the taking. Now you have that emotional victory, celebration and everything. A month and a half later, you're back on the water <laughs> and another challenge and something new for, for your rowing club. Yes, uh, and a very different race actually because it was only 1,500 meters to go from racing 6,700 meters on a curvy course down to racing 1,500 meters in a straight course. It's a very, very different ball game. Uh, we were able to take a couple weeks, two weeks off after the boat race because we all sort of needed to recoup. It was a very stressful time period. And I think it was good for all of us to like take a little bit of time. Uh, and then moving into Women's Henley, it was pretty exciting to see what we could do actually against American crews. There were a lot of Americans in the boat who had raced with their college teams in the U.S. and it was quite exciting to see how we could compare relative to the top Division I teams in the U.S. and we showed that we were right up there. Um, we beat all of them so that was pretty exciting. <laughs> now you have something new, a possibility of representing Bermuda yes. uh, on the horizon. There's still a little bit of uh, negotiating and talks to be held but the opportunity to represent Bermuda in any form of, of, of rowing, um, what is what that mean to you and your family? It means a lot. Uh, I would obviously this past year we were the first woman to row on the Tideway and I would also be the first woman to row for Bermuda which is pretty exciting to sort of carry that on. I've always looked up to Jimmy Butterfield and what he's done and he's the only one to have ever rowed for Bermuda and so it sort of feels to me like this culmination of all of this rowing experience that I've had and it would be such an honor to be able to take that forward to you know fly the Bermuda flag there. Uh, I'm going to try to qualify at the Latin America Games which are in March and I have to get top six there in order to qualify a boat for Rio in 2016. Now training and preparing for something like that has to change your focus a little bit because uh, you go from a team uh, training atmosphere which you'll still be doing mm -hmm. to individual how does that training or what do you know about that training how would it differ? Thankfully, I've rowed a bit in the single before. I've spent a lot of my summers rowing in the single, and the year after I graduated university, I rowed in the single and trained in a team, but by myself. And so I've learned sort of the different motivation that it takes, and that's really the biggest difference, is that you are not necessarily rowing for your teammates anymore. And in eight, you never give up because it means hurting your teammates. And in a single, it's all about you. Uh, and so you have to sort of know how to 
to help yourself in your own head because it's mostly a mental game and push through the pain that you're experiencing. And thankfully I've had quite a lot of experience with that, but that's going to be the biggest challenge going forward is sort of on a day-to-day -day basis making myself do that. Now you're going to be doing all of this and still trying to get your master's? Yes, I'm starting my MBA in September. I'm finishing my current master's degree at Oxford. I've been studying child development and um, education, and I finish that on August 14th, my dissertation, and then I start on September 21st with the MBA. So it's definitely going to be a pretty jam-filled next nine months or so. But I personally thrive a lot when I have other things going on in my life. I've tried the rowing by itself and I'm much happier, much more energetic. And I think my motivation is that much greater actually when I'm doing other things. So give us give us a, a morning of training with your rowing club what what times you start what are some of the general things that you guys do on a daily basis to ensure that when it's race time you're at the best tip-top shape both mentally and physically it varies a little bit week by week depending on the weather actually mostly in England there's a lot of flooding there's different things that you can and then there's you know the darkness that starts at 3 30 p.m. but often um, we'll have a couple mornings a week where we start at either 5 45 if we're rowing in the morning or 7 a.m. if we're lifting or rowing on the erg machines is what the indoor rowing machines are called uh, and so we'll do a row in the morning for about two hours or so and then in the afternoons it'll be a lift or an erg as well so it sort of depends upon the week but that's a typical day is you know one to two sessions every day for two to five hours total time essentially so it's quite a lot while you were here did you get a chance to get out on the water I haven't yet. I've been erging a lot, but I haven't had a chance to get out on the water. Cup match sort of took over the last four days, but it was really great to experience that as well. So I do hope to. I know there's a girl, there's been a rowing camp going on and there have been a lot of new rowers coming in and it's great that that's sort of growing um, and hopefully more Bermudians get involved with it. And I hope if once I finish, if I come back here or so, something that I could be involved in the rowing club in sort of coaching capacity or going out with people sometimes, that would be great. All right, well, we wish you all the best. We'll stay in touch to see how you make out uh, and hopefully we'll see you flying that flag in March and then in July. Yep. <laughs> Thank you so much.